Our Hotspots magazine is celebrating 38 years. It has been documenting the LGBTQ plus lifestyle and is the spirit of our Hotspots queer entertainment this week. And it's sponsored by the Broward Center for Performing Arts. In the LGBTQ plus community, we always make jokes about size matters. When it comes to Broward Center, size does matter. The Broward Center for the Performing Arts is the destination of choice for LGBTQ plus South Florida for spectacular entertainment in a large variety of performance venues. Broward Center ranks among the top 10 most visited theaters in the world, presenting more than 700 performances a year to more than 700,000 patrons, those visiting. Broward Center is the home for LGBTQ plus entertainers, shows, Broadway, national drag performances, LGBTQ plus choral events, and so much more. And Broward Center supports one of the world's largest gay communities of Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, and all of South Florida. They support the LGBTQ plus community and our nonprofits like any other theater in South Florida. And we're excited to tell you in the upcoming rich season of 2023 at the Broward Center for Performing Arts. Uh, they're bringing all kinds of things that are of great interest to LGBTQ plus community. And by the way, did you know, surveys show that the LGBTQ plus community participates in live theater performance two and a half times more often than our straight counterparts. And that is why they are the sponsor of Hotspots Queer Entertainment this week. Here we go. While Shakespeare is known for penning the most famous heterosexual love story of all time, Romeo and Juliet, his works have come under close analysis in recent, uh, in recent years and could actually be much queerer than people give the bard credit for. First, in Shakespeare's time, the women were men on the stage. Maybe the men, well, uh, it's all complicated. You decide. Nurse? Where's my daughter? Call her for me. No, by my maidenhead at 12 years old. I bade her come. How oh, now, who calls? What lad? How <clears throat> oh, now, who calls? What ladybird? God forbid, where's this girl? What lad? What ladybird? Oh. What joy? Well, that's from Shakespeare in Love. Uh, Two-thirds of his romantic sonnets are addressed to a fair youth, believed to be Henry Reithersley, the third Earl of Southampton. Many of Shakespeare's characters met gender binaries, cross-dressed, and had romantic interests that can only be described as queer. In Twelfth Night, for example, a shipwrecked Viola disguises herself as a man called Caesarea and enters into the service of Duke Orsino, who is in love with Olivia. However, Olivia falls in love with Caesario, and Viola in turn falls in love with Orsino, while she remains disguised as a man, creating a delicious love triangle. While discussion on the sexuality of Shakespeare goes on among historians, William Shakespeare is welcome news to the LGBTQ plus community and Hotspot's queer entertainment headline of the week, to be or not to be gay. Shakespeare says that is the question. What do y'all think? Shakespeare is gay. So not to bring up the caucasity in me, right? But my <laughs> aunt did <laughs> a... I heard there. I love that. I, it's my favorite. Use it in a sentence. <laughs> is that um, spelled I, I was trying to before I was so rudely interrupted. Um, but uh, my aunt did like a did one of those family tree things. Turns out my uh, great, 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 great great grandfather's brother's great grandson is what? Shakespeare. So it runs in the family. Yeah, I think he's Wow. Out. Wow. He out Al Al. I'm sorry. <laughs> he out Al Al. Al Al And that's a hard thing to do. That's yeah. So you're, so you're a descendant of Shakespeare. Yeah, uh, according to some some no. likely BS ancestry website from like no. 2012. 
So, yeah, I mean, so, you're white, you're gay. It could happen. It could happen. And again, it could be, right? Look at, like, look at I, I, I think that every, every you're pasty. white gay person he was pasty. is related. He was pasty. You know, right? the but conversation then, so far has started very gay because we're not talking about anyone but ourselves. Now, let's return I'm to I'm going there. Can you let okay. the black guy speak? Thank oh. you. So, <laughs> if, have we not looked at the images leading into this story? The pouty lips, the pose, gay, gay, gay. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, does life imitate art? Does art imitate life? Clearly, he, he does. His, his the writings are so genuine because those are lived experiences. And you cannot tell me those gentlemen, as they played all those roles, a little wiener boner didn't happen. And then things happen. Yeah. So again, it's very real, very possible. And again, I go back to pouty lips. I go back to that pose. That was a total owl pose. <laughs> so owl pose. <laughs> I know, I, I just think about the, the access of, uh, of uh, entertainment today. Whether it be in Britain, whether it be in India, whether it be in Australia, Canada, Toronto, in the United States, uh, the preponderance of the number of um, homosexual driven entertainers, singers, performers, musicians, Theater, actors, yeah, for sure. production directors, etc. Uh, it was that way in Shakespeare's mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Shakespeare is the greatest writer Absolutely. of the time. So yeah. I was going to say, from being in the musical theater world, there's no way that that wasn't the hub of where all the gay people were kind of hanging out. Still and, is, and, right? Exactly. <laughs> and and I think because of just our, our history, a retelling of history, that gay people didn't really exist. I think people were much more fluid back in his time than they are, than we would ever be taught now. So I, I think for sure he was probably on the bisexual, bisexual scale at least. Sure. And everybody around him and all those guys playing chicks and loving theater and all that, I, I think... I think Come he's, he's at least a Kinsey too. A kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers to Shakespeare. Queer. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think about the idea that uh, the men that were playing all of the women's roles, including Juliet, that uh, let's grant um, the crazy press secretary in Tallahassee and we grant um, uh, Ron DeSantis for a moment of this grooming message of, uh, about the trans community and drag queens. We know it's ridiculous and it's stupid, but let's just grant it for a moment and apply it to this time period of all of these men that were on Imagine. stages mm-hmm. that are dressing in women. There had to be yeah, a cross And it was interesting yeah, because in, those, in that theater days, you know, women weren't allowed to be in these plays and productions, so they were played by by men. Mm-hmm. And even in, you know, the, the days of opera going back centuries, you know, the countertenors were men who were castrated, so they were able to sing mm-hmm. with that you know, those high notes. voice and, and hit those notes. Uh, so, I mean, this has been going on for centuries. And so, to add to your point, imagine him, him taking that and then removing that from history or removing the fact that those people had to wear wigs and dress in, in such a garb. Removing all that from history. At what point is, is enough enough? And at what point are we going to say, We've always been here. You can't get rid of us. Accept it, acknowledge it, teach it, but teach it the right way so yeah. that way it's more tolerance and understanding yeah. versus the ignorance whether he's in to- yeah. he's digesting. I completely it. Like, agree with that. I, w- I want to ask in reverse. Um, let's assume that um, the the academic theories, which is really what this topic is about, the academic theories of Shakespeare being gay, even if he he was do we care no no does it make any difference we don't care but the rest of the world probably would care the thought of shakespeare headlining pride is really exciting i I love it because i think i think that it gives it gives another tinge to to all of like his really really foundational work Mm. in like british literature right to understand like the mind behind all of that work in a different way. I think that's super interesting. Like, and nobody can describe a sexual act like a gay person, okay? Mm-hmm. And if you look at some of those sonnets and his complete like display of sexual like act and lust is really? between two men. You yeah. could just Absolutely. feel it and how he describes it. The academic summary, that's what's said. Uh, you know, I'm shortcutting the story, mm-hmm. but especially the analysis of his sonnets in terms of what he's doing, yep. that's exactly what the um, uh, uh, academic community says is, He's writing about dramatic passion, and he's he's writing about a homosexual um, stream or silo of passion. And I'll change my answer a little bit to to what Max said, which was that if my they, influence, well, <laughs> you, if they, as an elder that you are, right? the elder that you, the visionary, yeah. that the, visionary you are. Was, the visionary leader, it was Actually, the list, visionary leader the, uh, <laughs> that he. If there were more of the people that we all look up to now, Tchaikovsky. Um, so many of the, the, the composers and players, if we just said they are gay and had that as like the premise, then when we have queer history and when we talk about them in 
an academic sense, at least there's more um, gravitas to it as far as teaching. Oh, they uh, wouldn't be allowed to teach it. So yeah. there's that. The, 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 the <laughs> Caucasian, we'll never hear about them. The Caucasian yeah. that will happen to those Caucasian folks, that you, if that was true, would destroy America because they would not know how to live. Yep. Yeah. I think it gives you a more beautiful viewpoint of love is love. Yeah. Especially oh, absolutely. back then. Yeah. Yeah. We just make everything gay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> exactly. and, and, and that's what Ron DeSantis is press secretary. As uh, he watches us right now, that's what he's saying. <laughs> LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.